Hello there, I'm Tom from Smart Heroes, and in this video I'm going to show you how to um, install a mastered amplifier and a power supply unit um, at, on, your, on your aerial, which, which you could use for several reasons, uh, maybe to improve your signal strength, um, to overcome sort of cable losses, or to help you greater serve extra TVs in your property. Um, hopefully once you've watched this video you understand that you'll be able to sort of confidently do this for yourself. Obviously for the purpose of the demonstration, I've just got the aerial set up on a little DIY set up, <laughs> that's actually a table leg, believe it or not, and a cable reel. Uh, of course that will be in your loft or on your chimney or on a wall somewhere, but the, the, the ideas are the same. So um, this cable here is just to represent the cable that cur you currently have or you're going to install um, into one of your rooms or something like that. So that's going to become where our power unit goes. Um, so let's begin. So. There's a few places you can start, start a power supply unit, uh, the power supply, a mastered amplifier, um, but they are actually designed to go onto the aerial mast itself uh, with a cable tie, so something like this. So with a little strap that comes with it. Um, it should be about a metre away from it, or a metre's worth of cable away. And that's because the signal is the best when it's the highest. If you, the further down the cable you go, the more signal you lose. So often, if you put an amplifier TV end, often it's too late, you know, the signal's already got weak, so you need to carry the signal, you know, sort of stop it becoming weak uh, and help it sort of come through your system. And also that the signal afterwards might then go on to a splitter, so you need to amplify it before the splitter rather than after the splitter. So although you'll have identical signal strength, um, you won't have the same signal. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to show you how to do this now, uh, but it doesn't have to go on, on your aerial mast, it could go in your loft just for accessibility reasons or on a wall or something just to make it a bit more manageable uh, but the, the, the aerial mast is the best place to put it, that's what's called a mast head amplifier. Uh, right, tools we're going to need, set the cutters, stay knife, just sort of prepare the coaxial cable, uh, I've got some screwdrivers here which we may need, we may not. Uh, so we're going to start off by intercepting the cable, so I'm going to cut the cable here and we're going to have to install an F connector onto this cable. Now if you don't know how to install an F connector, well, I have done another video on how to install F connectors, uh, which I will, if any, I'll, I'll, what I'll do, I'll post it in the links below, or if, it depends on where you watch this, it might not be there. Um, in which case, just drop a comment or anything, ask any questions, I'm happy to answer them. So once we've done that, Do you have any F connectors? <laughs> What's that doing there? <laughs> Two seconds. There. Right, so we probably will edit that bit out. <laughs> if, you, if you're watching it and it's still in there, obviously you haven't got around to doing it yet. Put the F connector on. Sorry, when I was when I was listing the tools we're going to need, I actually mentioned the parts. Obviously, we're going to need the the master amplifier itself, the power supply unit, and the F connectors if it's that type of um, connection. A lot of master amplifiers still use the sand and clamp type connection, and um, some power units use the coax, so IC type plug. Uh, but nowadays, it's it's generally most common to come across F connectors, uh, and they probably are the best ones to use. And uh, so we've we've done the aerial side of the of the master amplifier. What I'm going to do before I put that on, I'm going to do the TV cable side. So this is what's going to run down to our TV, and then if you go into our, our power unit, and then on. So if I do that. Ref plug. Okay, so now we have two F plugs, we have an in and an out, and we can fit our master amp. So we're going to make sure, well this particular amplifier, I'm just going to come up to you, it's actually a, a four-way amplifier, so we've got one in and four out, so that can actually feed four TVs. Um, it's also adjustable gain, it goes between 0 and 10 dB, so it's not particularly strong, but we don't, 
usually don't need it to be that strong. You can get some that go up sort of 25 dB, um, but if you're having to amplify a signal by 25 dB, there's usually another problem, unless you've got another splitter further down the leg. So um, if you have to amplify it that much, I recommend looking at the area and trying to do something like that to improve the signal first. But it does depend on the area you live in. And we're going to put the output. Them in. I recommend when you do this um, to use like an 11 mil spanner or just some pliers or something just to get them the, the, the air connectors on you know nice and tight. You don't want to go too tight so you, so you sort of break it, but you certainly want to go finger tight and then sort of another quarter turn just so you, you can't undo it with your hands. So we've got our aerial in to the UHF input and the aerial out. Around there, the strap. Try and do this without tipping over the area. So there, we've got that on there. In in sort of practice, really, that should be about a meter minimum cable length. So if you're going right up next to the area, it might be best to leave a little coil here, and then obviously we can tape down to the mast or cable tie down the mast. The uh, tape's better actually, a lot of people don't like it, but it's actually a better thing to do because well, cable ties go brittle with age and they just snap off and also the metal can expand and contract so it could squash, potentially squash the cable, not by much, but you know, enough to sort of, you know, not bother using it basically. So TVN, we're going to install another F connector for this power supply unit. Now it's worth noting that on this particular amplifier, although it's four way output, we can put a power unit on any single leg of that. So we could put our power supply unit on any one of our TVs. Um, on some amplifiers you have to power off one leg, so you've got to watch that. So in, if you're moving power in from room to room and you find you're losing signal, there is a good chance that you need to get up into your loft or up to your master amplifier and swap the cables over that end also. Okay, so I've got the TV in now. I'm going to unpackage the power supply unit. This is just a 12 volt power supply unit, 100 milliamp, I believe. Some one way mass amplifiers will work with 5 volts, but the majority are sort of 12 volts. So we're going to put that into the in, or it might say 12 volts on your side. Um, so we've got that. There's the power unit. Obviously, that, that will then go plug into the mains cable, but then we're also going to need a little lead go to our TV, our TV, which I'm just going to make up here, and so we have to clip to the TV side, or the output of the, the power supply unit, Obviously, these for this to work properly, the cable has to be in good enough condition to actually send 12 volts up the cable. If for whatever reason it's old or it's short on the cable, that's not going to work. Um, so, in, in many respects, this is the most important part of your TV. You could have a, a situation where you've got really old cables connected to the other four and uh, puts on the uh, mastered amplifier, but as long as this one works, the amplifier receives the power. If this one fails, they all fail. And you can get amplifiers with six way, six way, eight way amp outputs as well. So then that would go into the output. And then we're going to put a coaxial plug, which is quite over here, on this end. Again, there's another video for this if you struggle doing this. You may also want to go into a wall plate instead. And if you're going to use a wall plate, 
You just have to make sure it's a DC passing type ball plate, not a, what we call an isolated ball plate. Um, if it's an isolated ball plate, it will actually physically stop the, the voltage going up to the aerial. So you may need to bear, you may need to swap the ball plate over if you've got that. Usually, you can see behind the the ball plate is isolated or not because it will have like a little blue resistor. Um, so it's quite, it's very common with sort of chrome wall plates for some reason. I don't know why. Um, and also sort of blocks of flat. It was, but its main, its main use was for blocks of flats to help sort of the electrical safety side of things. Um, as we've done that. Now that can go into your TV. So we've got aerial goes into the mastered amplifier. And if it's a one way, it'll just go one way. If it's a split inversion, which is what this one is, it amplifies and splits the signal, we can run that to four TVs. It goes down to our power supply unit, which we've got here, which has just got a, you know, uh, that's just a UK style mains plug, but if you're doing this in the US, you have a different type, and that obviously just goes into your mains point. And then this will then go into your TV, which you then just sort of auto tune and you get all your TV programs through that. Um, so I hope this, this video is of some use to you. I hope you might save some money, get a professional out, or if you're a professional electrician and you're getting involved with something like this for the first time, I hope it's of some use to you. Um, if you've got any questions, please do leave it in the comment section beneath. Uh, please do give it a likes up or a thumbs up and please do subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, where we've got lots more videos like this. Um, so that's it, I'm Tom Smart from Smart Aerials, bye for now.